a very good morning to all of you guys myself neha gupta your mentor for current affairs now i know that you are wondering that why am i wishing you the happy new year on the 31st of december only firstly because we meet in the morning only so i i would not be there with you all to wish you the happy new year at the eve of this day okay so i'm wishing you in the morning secondly i want to be there on saturday on 1st of january so i will be meeting you in the next year only on monday so be there start your new year with something new something fresh learn something okay so on that note i am going to wish you a very happy prosperous and productive year ahead and in order to make your year productive you need to do your karma and if you want to do the karma you need to watch the videos you need to study properly even if you are not watching the videos that will do okay that will be fine but prepare whichever source you are preparing for whichever source you are choosing choose whatever you want but do not let your uh, karma go by do not procrastinate your things so these are some of the things that you need to remove remove from yourself now i'm not targeting any individual here i'm just saying it collectively so even if you do not have procrastination in you the other bad qualities or the other things that you find are negative in yourself accept them and move ahead accept them and think of the ways uh, through which you can uh, better them okay chaliye on that note let's begin with our first question which of the following is the correct statement about the gis enabled automatic water supply system so we have five statements here which you can read right now out of these five statements the right answer is option e that is this gis enabled automatic water supply system aims to provide all facilities related to water connection of the citizens of containment board on this online platform okay so guys this platform was launched on a very special day that is defense estate day which is launched uh, which is celebrated on december 16 therefore it can also become a question if rbi sabin abad uh, sorry rbi and sabin notification comes out in january or february which is the uh, i think right now is the highest chances that the notification would come out very soon so you should prepare seriously okay the module has been developed uh, by the bhaskara chari institute for space applications and geoinformatics so the module for this system has been developed by this arc under the guidance of defense secretary and director general of defense estate the purpose we have already discussed so basically it is going to provide the citizens of containment board about uh, provide all the services related to water connection even uh, if they want to apply for the new water connections online or any information that they want to get regarding that all that will be provided in a hassle free manner on this online platform that's the basic purpose under which of the following act is the national anti doping agency established so guys here the right answer is society's registration act 1860 why is this in the news there are two reasons for that first is that national anti doping bill was introduced in the lok sabha by the sports minister second reason for this being in the news is the new report of the world anti doping agency so guys do you know what the report states according to that report india is the country that has the third largest cases of doping okay after russia and italy so in light of this statement india has uh basically generating more and more or we have more and more players who are resorting to doping for their sport okay so in light of this statement in light of this report you need to understand the importance of the bill which i am going to uh, teach you now okay so i told you sports minister anurag thakur introduced it so we have some key features of this bill first statutory framework for the functioning of national anti doping agency and national dope testing laboratory okay now understand that both of these organizations were established under the society's registration act of 1860 now they both will be abolished and they will be reconstituted under the bill national anti doping bill 2021 thus both of these will become the statutory bodies okay so that's the uh first point is saying 
Now, another important point here is that this National Dope Testing Laboratory has been suspended by the World Anti-Doping Agency because of some of the technicalities, because, because it was not meeting some of the standards of WADA. Therefore, the organization has uh, suspended this Indian organization. Now, if it will get the statutory framework, obviously the functioning or the standards will also be upgraded. And thus, in light of this recent development, this is important that both of these organizations are getting the statutory status. Setting the next point is that NDTL and other dope testing laboratories will also be set up. Okay, so this is again reiterating. NADA will be empowered since it will get the statutory framework. Obviously, other facilities as well as responsibilities will be uh, imposed on NADA. So, among the uh, among the authorities that will be given to NADA are conducting raids, investigations, sample collection, leaving sanctions, etc. But all of these work, all of these activities have to be under the aegis of criminal. Code of Criminal Procedures Act 1973, okay? So NADA will also be bound by this act. It has to act in accordance with this act. So that's another minor point. Next is that this bill seeks to establish a national board for anti-doping in sports. And the members of this board will be uh, selected by the central government only. NADA and NDTL will be reconstituted and uh, their, uh, basically their members will also be selected by the central government. The DG of NADA will be selected by the central government and it will be created as a body corporate in New Delhi. Currently also the NADA is established in New Delhi. Okay. So it will continue to stay there. It's just the demolition is happening on the papers, not in the pit motors. The entire building of NADA is not going to be demolished and then it will be recreated. No, it is all happening on the papers. But yes, the status, the responsibilities, the authorities, everything is going to be changed for NADA as well as NDTN. Okay, so that was the act. Let's have a look at the report of WADA as well. So according to the report, India has the third largest cases of doping in 2019 okay most of the doping cases were witnessed in bodybuilding weightlifting and athletics in 2019 152 anti doping rule violation cases were found which accounts for 17% of the world's total anti doping cases so this is the huge uh, contribution that india is making that to the negative arena then the top violator is russia and if you know that russia was uh, suspended from this year's Tokyo Olympics as well. Uh, this year's Olympics because of the doping charges. Then we have Italy following Russia and India is at the third position. Which of the following state UT has signed an MOU with the University College Birmingham at the India Globe Global Forum Dubai to enhance the potential of colleges and other educational institutions? Here the right answer is Jammu and Kashmir. So basically under this MOU, this University College of Birmingham will set up an office in Jammu and Kashmir. It will collaborate with the local educational institutions in the valley and then it will help these institutions first of all in building their own capacity and secondly it will also help the students take admission in these local institutions at a lower fees. Okay, so in this manner this MOU is going to enhance the potential of the universities and colleges within the uh, union territory of Jammu and Kashmir. Which state has given a 1% reservation for transgenders in police recruitment? Okay, this is a very important question guys. So, which state is it? It is Karnataka. Karnataka has announced 1% reservation. Which state's police department has launched Project Abhaya at other state uh, stadium to ensure safety and security of girls so it is delhi okay so the police of delhi has launched this this project abhaya abhaya, uh, abhaya basically means the one who has no fear fearless okay so that's the meaning of abhaya for those who are not very well versed with hindi now under this project basically the delhi police is targeting children okay so 
they will be providing knowledge they will be providing awareness among the school children about the recourse that they can take if they are in any kind of danger the helpline or whatever uh, services are there to help the girls to help the children so knowledge about that will be dispersed by the delhi police among the school children and the ngo that is part partnering with the delhi police is shakti foundation okay in this project abhiya next news related to delhi only that delhi has announced to set up its own first teachers university so basically the basic purpose of this university is to create good high quality uh, teachers for the schools of delhi and this university basically will uh, provide the courses related to teaching like b ed courses and the courses that are directly after 12th okay like b l ed and other courses so those courses will be provided which of the following organization has developed the armored engineer reconnaissance vehicle for the corps of engineers of the indian army so here we have uh, five options option d is the right answer ordnance factory board and bharat electronics limited both of them are collaborating uh, basically both of them have developed this armored engineering recon reconnaissance vehicle now guys i picked up this question for a specific purpose many a times you may come across news of vehicles or uh, the weapons that have been launched by the drdo tested by drdo launched by isro etc etc but it happens majority of the times not majority of the times maybe there are students who are very well aware of, about the defense or the weapons but sometimes for some students it may happen that they won't understand the use of the vehicles thus they would find it difficult to memorize it as well okay so here i pick this question up so that i can tell you what this vehicle is and under and make you understand it so that you can easily memorize it so what this vehicle is armored engineer reconnaissance vehicle so what is the meaning of reconnaissance because this is the most difficult word here and it has the summary of this vehicle the functioning of this vehicle reconnaissance means survey done by military in a region okay and the purposes can be two either to locate an enemy or to get acquainted with the features of the region so that they can retaliate well whenever there is any infiltration across the borders so for this purpose they have uh, they have deployed this weapon now which military force has deployed it it's indian army so that's the basic purpose of this armored engineering uh, reconnaissance vehicle it will help the indian army to uh, get acquainted with the with the physical features of the region as well as locate an enemy okay apart from this the very specific purpose of this is this vehicle is to basically carry out the engineering tasks for the corps of engineers okay because if they are well acquainted with the physical features it will be easier for them to construct roads to carry out other kinds of engineering tasks whatever uh, are there drdo is the organization that has developed the design of this vehicle but the manufacturer of this vehicle is this ordnance factory medak and this bharat electronics limited now guys it's the time for gk factory so the topic for today is ramsar sites we often come across ramsar sites whenever a new addition is there from india in the list many of you have already known about it okay so you would be thinking what's new is would be there that ma'am is going to tell us so guys the new thing here is that yes you come across ramsar sites but do you know what a wetland is basically what kind of role does it play in the ecology or what is its importance why do we have an entire convention or in or uh, just to save the wetlands so that is something i'm going to discuss today but before understanding the uh, what the wetlands are we need to acquaint ourselves with the aquatic aquatic ecosystem so i'm just give you a brief introduction regarding the aquatic ecosystem then we will move on to the wetlands and its importance and the conservation methods that have been taken measures that have been taken to just help the wetlands conserve okay 
so guys this is the aquatic ecosystem okay which is divided into three parts either a water can be fresh or it can be saline okay so these are the two kinds of categories of water ya to pani saaf hoga ya to pani kharab hoga kharab yaar means the level of salt that is there in the water khara pani to nahi pee sakte so that would be saline water now the saline water is named as the marine ecosystem okay and the fresh water is named after its quality that is fresh water now how can you measure the freshness of a lake the freshness of a, a big body of water we measure it on the basis of its salinity so if the salinity is up to okay up to not even um, more than 5 okay 5 parts per 1000 of water salinity the presence of salt is up to or less than that Uh, less than five parts per thousand of water, then the water bo body would be classified as a fresh water water, a uh, fresh water body. Okay, if the uh, presence of salinity is above thirty five per uh, thousand uh, uh, per par parts per thousand. Okay, so that's the full form, thirty five ppt. Then we will. a uh, classify it as the marine ecosystem and if it is between 5 to 35 then it would be the brackish water ecosystem so these are the three basic classifications of aquatic systems and within these okay we have other uh, sorry other uh, classifications of the aquatic ecosystem for example in fresh water we have two lentic and lotic lentic are the water bodies that remain still okay and lotic are the water bodies that are moving in nature okay like we have the lota okay so lota ludakta rehta hai from there you can memorize that this lotic water bodies do not stay at one place they just move so lotic if you can remember then obviously lentic would be the static one so wetlands come under this classification they are the lentic bodies but they are the fresh water bodies okay and lotic we have already understand uh, understood that it is the moving water bodies brackish water bodies are the estuaries mangroves salt marshes etc and marine wali to seas and oceans we know so that's the basic introduction now let's move into the wetlands okay first of all we have understood that it is uh, the fresh water water the uh, water bodies that are fresh in nature that have the salinity level of up to 5 ppt that are the wa fresh water bodies the bodies which are not uh, which are lentic in, in nature which do not move are the water bodies but are these two classification sufficient to classify a water body as wetland or as a swamp no for wetland we have a very specific criteria that is the level the height of the water the level of the water should not be above 6 meters okay should not be less than 6 meters in high sorry in low tide okay 6 meters se kam nahi hona chahiye that's the classification given by iucn international union for conservation of nature so it has given this limit not less than 6 meters now the wetlands have a very uh, very uh, rich biodiversity because they are not the complete land they are not complete the water, complete water therefore they are created through the mixture of land and water therefore the uh, biodiversity that is originated in the wetlands are very unique in nature okay so they can survive in the water logged soil types of wetlands marshy or swampy lands like the daldal daldal is not completely a water body okay the water level is not uh, that much uh, uh, that you can compare it with a sea or with a river or with a lake no but they are swampy land basically the presence of water is there the la the presence of land is also there so the swampy lands or the marshy lands also come under the classification of wetlands then we have estuaries mangroves flood plains the surrounding area of the river and lake are also the wetlands not the completely surrounding complete surrounding area of 
reverse hand leg just the area which is very adjacent which is next to edge it's adjacent to a river or lake would be the wet line if it has the presence of water now why is the conservation of wet land important so uh, first of all it is okay sorry for the disturbance guys so first of all it is a very uh, rich source of medicinal vegetation vegetation the vegetation that grows here has a high uh, a high quantity of medicinal qualities then the biodiversity is also rich here it also acts as the breeding ground for the migratory birds sometimes it also acts as the habitat for some species of uh, birds and flowers as well okay so next is groundwater recharge now this is very important reason for india also we have a groundwater table depleting okay uh, so groundwater recharge is also done by these wetlands they also prevent soil erosion they sometimes they act as a front line of defense against tsunami particularly mangroves because we have the vegetation in front of us in basically in between the water body and the mainland so that vegetation acts as the front line defense whenever tsunami comes but obviously majority of the times the force of the tsunami is very high that it surpasses that the that line of defense and comes to the mainland next the treatment of pollutants in water so wetlands themselves act as the uh, recyclers so they treat the pollutants but there is a limit to it if you put maximum amount of uh, pollutants particularly the amount of pollutant that is beyond the capacity of the uh, wetland to recycle then obviously wetlands would deteriorate so this is what happening at present climate change mitigation is also one of the uh, roles that is played by the wetlands supply fresh water to the people surrounding uh, the wetlands act as a beautiful tourist sites support aquaculture as well so fishes are there aquaculture is supported and there are many more roles played by the wetlands these were just the most important roles that i highlighted here the major reasons for depletion of wetlands deforestation we all know what deforestation is industrial waste human encroachment so humans have encroached the wetland areas also and also this encroachment does not only mean the habitat the humans have also encroached wetlands in terms of cultivation also they are cultivating majority of india's wetland is used for rice cultivation at present so we cultivate rice on the wetland we all know that rice is a very high water intensive crop so this is leading to depletion of the uh, wetlands so we need to understand this thing that which crop do we need to pay more attention to next is unsustainable tourism okay so kuch bhi log aate hain then they uh, they just roam around wander around the area and throw their garbage there only so that's unsustainable tourism sand mining is also one of the reasons and eutrophication is another reason now what is eutrophication through this industrial waste when the amount of nutrients and minerals accumulate within one water body or within a part of one water body accumulate and increase in their intensity then they will give birth to algae and fungi okay and the very a uh, basic characteristic of this algae and fungi is that they just cover the upper layer they grow they bloom and they upper, cover the upper layer of the water body and thus the uh, ecosystem the biodiversity beyond the surface of the water body dies because of the lack of presence of sun they do not get the sunlight properly so this is just very detrimental to the marine ecosystem to the uh, aquatic in ecosystem the concentration of minerals and nutrients that is precisely due to the industrial waste 
this is increasing due to the industrial use so natural accumulation of nutrients and minerals is in the capacity of the wetlands that they can recycle themselves they can reduce that amount from their own but the industrial waste that the humans are putting inside the wetlands that is beyond the capacity of these wetlands to recycle on their own so at last we come across the ramsar sites first is that it was signed on the february 2nd 1971 this is ramsar okay iran this is india so february 2nd is celebrated as world wetlands day uh, the total number of parties to this convention is 172 and we all know why do we need to preserve our wetlands because they are very important for the uh, entire biodiversity and they also help in mitigating the climate change governing body of this convention is conference of parties which meets once in every 3 years and the list of ramsar sites has at present over 2400 wetlands now comes the facts related to india so india's first wetland site was recorded uh, was the chilika lake in odisha that was recorded in this list of ramsar sites then we also have this montrex record what is this montrex record this is basically under the ramsar convention two lists start prepared prepared first is list of ramsar sites and second is this montrex record now in the list of ramsar sites we have the wetlands that are of international importance and that need to be conserved but in this montrex record we have the wetlands that are highly endangered okay they are at the verge of changing their characteristic due to human induced activities therefore they are classified in a separate list at present it has 46 wetlands in it okay total number of ramsar sites of india is 47 haiderpur wetland in uttar pradesh was the latest one to be added in december this year basically december 2021 only this wetland was added into the list India's sites in Montreal record are two: Kyolladiu National Park in Rajasthan and Loktak Lake in Manipur. Okay, ये भी याद रखना. Now for conservation, what is India doing? India has the National Wetland Conservation Program in 1986. Now India also had the National Lake Conservation Plan of 2001. What India did in 2015? Merged both of them to have. Uh, integrated approach towards uh, conserving the wetlands so that's all about today's video and this is the last message that i wanted to give you mindset is everything so keep your mindset positive so that you can achieve whatever you want to achieve in your life on that note i'm going to say uh, goodbye to you all thank you so much for watching this video till now and a very very happy new year to you all